this um, Monday mindfulness meditation group has been meeting ever since March when COVID um, stopped us in our tracks and it felt like it would be a good thing to practice together. So we've been doing that over these many months and um, our practice and our sense of community has really deepened. And for those of you who've been coming regularly, I thank you so much. And for those of you who are, are coming for the first time tonight, welcome. It's really great to see you and to have you here on this special occasion. I think we're all concerned about the state of our country, the state of our world, the endless tiresome campaigning in our terribly polarized country, social injustice and violent unrest, the silent presence of coronavirus, the hovering threat of climate disruption as Mother Gaia raises her voice ever more loudly. I'm really heartened that there are so many initiatives uh, to invite people to pray and meditate for peace and justice in our country right now, as we finally arrive at this election day. Um, I think I may have mentioned this on the full moon. Some of this I may have said then a few days ago, but in Congo, uh, where I was with one of the earth treasure vases, uh, they have an expression, imoja ninguvu. It means together we are strong. And that strength is a muscle that we build every single time we gather to meditate. Even though it sometimes feels as if you know, we're not really doing anything when we meditate. We are. We're getting strong. And this global healing community that has uh, been built over many, many years is also strong. This Sangha is strong. And these are the times that we have been practicing for in our lives and together. So as this extreme polarization that we're living inside of collectively is coming to a head, our job is to go down the middle, to be a force for calm in the storm so that we can see clearly what steps to take that do not contribute to any more reactivity, drama, and chaos. In meditation, we cultivate clarity of the heart, not the mind. It's our deep compassion that we need to draw from now not our ideas of what we think is right or wrong. It's time to rise to the occasion through our caring for each other, for the earth, and for all life. This compassion is the most powerful force to be reckoned with. In Buddhism, we call it bodhicitta, and it is our best protection from fear. We're in the throes of preparing ourselves to move into the next level of our evolutionary journey of life on earth. We are in it taking into consideration the mistakes of the past, but not getting caught 
in spiraling round and round and round, going nowhere. It's time to look towards the future we wish to create. And envisioning that future we wish to see, along with our commitment to embody it, is a potent alchemical offering to the world. And through our conscious awareness, through the power of our conscious awareness, cultivated in a sacred way, which is what we do every time we come to this practice, we create the conditions for miracles to take root in our lives. It's not just an idea. It's a real thing, this miraculous human life where anything is possible. So there are so many spiritual forces in us and beyond us that are helping us to see, to envision, and to embody this awareness, this vision for the future. And it's our love and our compassion that opens the door for the support to become available. These larger forces can be accessed through focusing on the light. The realm of light connects us directly to these vast spiritual forces of the universe. And our embodiment is the bridge, the vessel through which this light can come into our earthly existence. We can receive this light every time we open the door of our hearts and take a conscious breath. It's right there. When we connect with this light and direct it for the good of all, we're contributing to the enlightenment of all beings. So let's open to this light, this universal love and compassion that goes beyond polarity and fear and guides us on the path of awakening. It lights up the path so we can see our way. The earth is calling us now, witnessing us, summoning us to meet this moment for the sake of all life. And we have heard that call or we would not be here right now. in the story of the Buddha's enlightenment. Before his, or her as the case may be, full awakening, the Buddha was confronted by the hordes of Mara. Mara, the great deluder in the form of poisonous greed, hatred, and delusion, just as the Buddha was about to wake up fully 
Mara appeared with all those poisonous threats. And it was a moment that the Buddha could have wavered, could have been seduced, become overwhelmed, or filled with terror or grief. She could have easily given up. But instead, the Buddha held his ground and saw clearly into the nature of all that was attempting to unseat him. Mara was so terrifying, they say that even the devas and the angelic forces ran away. But unperturbed, Siddhartha spoke directly to Mara saying, I know who you are. You cannot fool me. And alone in that moment, the Buddha-to-be stretched down his hand and touched the earth, calling her to be his witness. The spirit of the earth rose up and affirmed the Buddha's right to occupy that holy seat under that Bodhi tree. It's said that the earth goddess twisted her long, thick braid of hair, which as you can imagine, I like a lot, and torrents of water fell from it, creating a flood that washed away the armies of Mara. And the path opened for Siddhartha to realize full awakening. So here we are on the cusp of our own dream for a more beautiful world yet to be realized and embodied. And we too are obstructed by an army of greed, hatred and delusion. The teachings encourage us not to get caught in fear or overwhelm, or outrage, but rather to find our ground strongly and with a sense of great concentration and purpose to hold steady, to go down the middle in order to face whatever unfolds next with full presence, with compassion for all life, and our collective future. So we take our seat upon this Mother Earth and invite her to guide our hearts. This time has been coming for a long time. Let's summon the Earth to support us as we open to the light. Harness the spiritual energy that is the very fabric of our being and radiate it out from our hearts into the world. Thank you. So for this occasion, um, tonight's practice will begin shortly with a recitation of the Heart Sutra. It's a powerful chant done with a drum and um, it felt like we need, we need that energy. The Heart Sutra arose in the Buddhist tradition when the original teachings 
evolved to include the intention for the liberation of all beings, not just oneself. And the realization had dawned, you know, that we are not separate. So compassion became the basis of our practice in the world. And so in the Heart Sutra, we invoke the awareness of emptiness from which everything arises and passes away. After, after the uh, opening verses and the Heart Sutra, we will um, enjoy two periods of sitting meditation, interspersed with a period of slow walking meditation. I'll lead you through those. And in the first um, sit, I'm going to lead a, a guided meditation, especially for tonight. The second sit will be in silence. So please find a comfortable position that you can maintain for the period of sitting. And rest your attention on your breath. This is the practice of mindfulness. Using the breath as an anchor for the mind. So whenever the mind starts running off, we just bring it back to the breath. And resting awareness in the present moment, right here and right now, which if there's nothing else that is um, comforting, maybe just being in the present moment for the period that we're together is kind of a relief since we spend so much time anticipating the future. And let's imagine that we're meeting now in a beautiful temple to lift our spirits in these challenging times. Oh, please bring your full presence to this precious time where we're together, taking it as uh, really the most precious kind of thing we could be doing right now, knowing that the ripples from this will sustain us and go out into the world. So I'm now gonna offer some incense at the altar, which I have here in the room. The candles are lit. And when I return to my seat, I'll ring the bell to begin our formal practice with the opening verses of Refuge and Bodhicitta and the Heart Sutra. In gratitude, we offer this incense to all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas throughout space and time. May it be fragrant as Earth herself, reflecting our careful efforts, our wholehearted awareness, and the fruit of understanding slowly ripening. May we and all beings be companions of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. May we awaken from forgetfulness and realize our true home.
perfection of wisdom, mother of Buddhas, bodhisattvas, and all beings, nourishing, holding, and healing all. Great Mother Earth, precious jewel of the cosmos, to you we bow in gratitude. We take refuge in the earth as our teacher, the one who shows us the way in this life. We take refuge in the earth as an expression of the Dharma, the teachings of interbeing, understanding, and love. We take refuge in the earth as an embodiment of the Sangha, the vast interdependent community of life in balance and harmony. Living within the web of life on earth, we dedicate ourselves to embodying awakened awareness on the path of healing in service to all beings. We dedicate our lives to realizing our oneness with Gaia. This precious human form is difficult to obtain and embodies opportunities and resources. Give us the energy to realize its potential. The ultimate foe, the Lord of death, can come at any time. Give us the energy to live a life of no regret. The laws of the way things are work internally. Give us the energy to live without shame. Suffering is present in all six realms. Give us the energy not to take birth in these states. The reliable and definite refuges are the three jewels. Give us the energy to trust them. The six kinds of beings are as kind as our parents. Give us the energy for loving kindness and compassion. In the end, our minds are nothing but being as truth. Give us the energy to attain a stable understanding. May all beings enjoy happiness and the seeds of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the seeds of suffering. May they not be separated from great happiness, free from suffering. May they dwell in great equanimity, free from passion, aggression, jealousy, and ignorance. The Maha Prajna Paramita Ridaya Sutra Consciousness, no, I 
eyes, no ears, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no color, no sound, no smell, no taste, no touch, no object of mind, no realm of eyes, and so forth until no realm of mind, consciousness, no ignorance, and also no extinction of it, and so So if you've not already found a comfortable position for your meditation, please do so now. Take a few deep breaths in and out. Allow your breathing to slow down and deepen and become conscious. With each breath, feel your body relax. Continuing to breathe in and out, deep and slow with awareness. Until you feel stable and calm and connected. Letting the mind drop into the body and into full presence, sensing the ground beneath you providing stability and nourishment and a feeling of security as your energetic roots reach deep down into the earth. Pause. 
And now with body, speech and mind connected through the breath, let's open our hearts to the present moment when the world awaits the outcome of the presidential election in the United States of America. Resting awareness in this very moment, knowing that the future is not yet here and the past has come and gone. Let's call on all of our teachers and guides, ancestors, elders, lineage masters, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and all the wisdom beings that we feel connected to and invite them to be present with us now. Invite them to bless you and everyone who is present for this meditation. Invite them to, be, to bless all beings in the United States of America and in the world. Breathing in, receive the blessing of this love and clarity wisdom and guidance. And as this blessing enters you, feel this love and caring coming all the way into your deepest heart of hearts in the form of light. And on your next out breath, send this love to everyone who is present for this meditation. And breathing in, receive the love that is being sent. Breathing in and breathing out, sending and receiving this blessing of love and caring. Gradually becoming aware now of our circle, expanding to include all of our family and friends. Expanding from community to community all across the United States of America. around the whole earth until all beings everywhere are included in this sacred blessing. I send this blessing now on the breath to travel through the song lines and meridians of the earth, offering the gift of love and caring to all of the people, animals, plants, and places that are in need of healing and protection, wisdom and compassion all around the world. And see this vital energy also flowing into your own location, your special spot in nature, flowing through all of nature in your own region.
And now feel this vital energy flowing into you as a holy vessel. Overflowing and radiating out in the form of light into the vast interdependent community of life on earth. And now, please focus your awareness single-pointedly on the United States of America and its role in the evolution of life on Earth. As the United States moves into the presidential elections, May we acknowledge the strife and polarization spinning in reactivity and imagine all of this unrest calming down, finding new ground. The old structures of dominance and repression releasing transforming and emerging into full realization of liberty, equality, and justice for all. And now mindfully breathe in the reactivity in the collective field of the United States of America. And mindfully breathe out the love, the clarity and wisdom. And breathing in, receiving the collective fears and reactivity and breathing out Sending wisdom, understanding, compassion, and harmony. Including our own reactivity and fear. Gradually softening and settling into the heart of wisdom the great perfection of our interbeing. And as these fears are transformed into understanding, let's imagine a brilliant golden light emanating from our hearts into the center of the earth, the heart of Gaia. Activating the light from the core of the earth. I see this light radiating out to encircle the planet. North to south. East to west. Northwest to southeast. And northeast to southwest.
sense these circles of golden light magnetically drawing in the heartfelt prayers of thousands and thousands of people joining us now. And as this light grows stronger and more radiant, it absorbs all of the light flowing from all the sources of vast, unbounded spiritual support being directed to the earth at this time. Imagine that this light then begins to cohere around the whole planet into a vast web of light. And see this vast web of light gradually taking the form of a flower of life. encompassing the whole earth in a field of light, radiating love and compassion, liberating the wisdom of the ages, pulsing in from the cosmos and flowing everywhere on earth where balance and harmony is needed. entering the hearts of all beings, particularly in the United States of America, pulsing into the land and activating too the underground mycelial network within the earth, touching everything within the web of life. See this flower of life like a gigantic orb surrounding the entire planet, shimmering in response as the underground network of mycelia within the earth comes to life. As above, so below. And imagine this sends a message to the flower of life to release a stream of little orbs smaller replicas of the flower of life. With each of these orbs containing the same light-filled energy as the large flower of life that surrounds the planet. Each orb assigned to a particular person who is in a position of influence concerning the US elections along with every voter in the land. Witness now as these orbs enter the field of activity of each of these individuals, inviting them to become consciously aware of the wisdom and compassion needed in this very moment. Inviting them to listen deeply, respond, compassionately and take action kindly and effectively for the benefit of all life on earth.
And now let us hold all of these individuals in a pure field of loving kindness and compassion as they wake up and respond. Now gently allow the visualization to dissolve. Dissolve into light and melt into your own deepest heart. Knowing that the work is accomplished, we trust that the universe will respond appropriately in the spirit of great perfection that underlies all things. I'm taking a deep, slow in-breath and a deep, slow out-breath. Returning now to the circle where we began, please bring your awareness back into your body, feeling your feet on the floor, grounded on the earth. connected to your place, giving thanks for this precious, sacred time to be together. And open your eyes to return to the group for walking meditation. <clears throat> Practicing the way of awareness gives rise to benefits without limit. We vow to share the fruits with all beings. We vow to offer tribute to parents, teachers, friends, and numerous beings who give guidance and support along the path. We do not cling in any way to the virtue and goodness we have generated. In order that all beings may benefit from it, we dedicate it in the realm of totality. This virtue and all virtue gathered in the three times, we dedicate, as all Buddhas do, to supreme non-residing awakening. May we attain the state of union in this life. So I have a candle and um, I'm going to light it and I'm going to keep it lit for as long as it feels necessary. <laughs> and I invite you to do the same when you turn away from the screen, if you have a candle in your home, 
Give it, light it, keep the light alive. And I wanted to also share the mantra of compassion, just as another anchor for us as we go forward from here. There's so many ways we can remember to come back to, uh, as Thich Nhat Hanh would say, our true self, to the heart of compassion. And um, another way we can do that is through a mantra that we can just come back to, similar to uh, returning to the breath when we remember Oh my goodness, where I where have I been? I've gotten swept away. Oh, I want to go. I want to go down the middle. <laughs> and uh, so I take a breath, and there I am. So the same is can be done with a mantra. And the mantra of the Bodhisattva of compassion, whose name in the Tibetan tradition is Chenrezig or Avalokiteshvara, we invoked in the Heart Sutra. That mantra is probably one you've heard, Om Mani Peme Hung. 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 It means basically homage to the jewel in the lotus. The lotus is in our hearts. The jewel is compassion. So we invoke that quality of compassion that is embodied in this deity, Genrezi, but is also within us. And we come back to that as our great protection, our great, you know, guide the light on the path. So let's do that mantra a few more times together. Do it with me so that it's in there. Om Mani Peme Hong. Om Mani Peme Hong. Om Mani Peme Hong. Om Mani Peme Hong. Om Mani Pemi 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 Oh, money, pay me home. <laughs> and remember also to connect with Gaia, to go outside, to find your location, to find your spot, to take a breath in that place where you can take refuge in a relationship with the earth and the trees, wherever it is in your place. Don't forget to take those holy, sacred moments with her. In the tradition, in the Plum Village tradition, we often uh, sing songs that are um, inspired by poetry that um, was written by Thich Nhat Hanh, and this is one of them. So I'll do it several times. Um, I invite you to listen and then you can uh, sing along. I have arrived, I am home. Solid. 
I am free. I am solid. I am free. In the ultimate, I dwell. In the ultimate, I dwell. I am solid.